Human trafficking is the trade of humans for the purpose of forced labor, sexual slavery, or commercial sexual exploitation for the trafficker or others. This includes providing a spouse for forced marriage and also includes the extraction of organs or tissues, such as for surrogacy or as in ova removal. The United Nations General Assembly on November 15, 2000 AD adopted a resolution to hold the Palermo Convention called the UN Convention Against Transnational Organized Crime or UNTOC and from this adopted the Palermo Protocol to prevent, suppress, and punish trafficking in persons, especially women and children, also referred to as the Trafficking Protocol or UNTIP Protocol. This protocol entered into international law on December 25th 2003 and as of February 2018 it has been ratified by 173 parties. On March 23, 2009 Amnesty International, a non-governmental organization with the stated mission of enforcing the Universal Declaration of Human Rights UN Resolution 217, adopted in 1948, and the International Bill of Human Rights, ratified in 1976, published an article entitled, People Smuggling. In this article, AI estimated that every year, four million people are trafficked or smuggled across international borders. The value of this criminal trade has been estimated at approximately 10 billion U.S. dollars per year. In response to the growing concerns addressed in the AI article, in 2011, the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, working under the legal authority of the United Nations Convention Against Transnational Organized Crime, a multilateral treaty against organized crime ratified in the year 2000, the aforementioned Palermo Convention, distinguished as law the distinction between human trafficking and people smuggling as follows, quote, Trafficking in persons is the acquisition of people by improper means such as force, fraud, or deception, with the aim of exploiting them. Smuggling of migrants involves the procurement for financial or other material benefit of illegal entry of a person into a state of which that person is not a national or resident. In the United States, human trafficking is broadly defined as a modern form of slavery involving illegal smuggling and trading of people, including minors, for forced labor or sexual exploitation, and is officially defined as, quote, the recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring, or receipt of persons by means of coercion, abduction, fraud, deception, or abuse of power of a position of vulnerability for the purpose of exploitation. Human trafficking in U.S. jurisprudence is specifically not synonymous with forced migration or smuggling. Under Federal Law 18 U.S. Code Section 1589 it is a crime to make people work by use of force, coercion, or fear. 
Additionally, the Victims of Trafficking and Violence Protection Act, TVPA, is a federal statute passed into law in the year 2000 by the U.S. Congress and signed by President Clinton. The law was later reauthorized by Presidents Bush, Obama, and Trump. In addition to its applicability to U.S. citizens, it has the ability to authorize protections for undocumented immigrants who are victims of severe forms of trafficking and violence. On April 11, 2018, U.S. President Donald Trump signed the Stop Enabling Sex Traffickers Act into law, which is aimed at closing websites that enable the crime to occur and prosecuting their owners and users. From Article 3, Section C, and 3, Section D of the United Nations Year 2000 Primary Palermo Protocol, the aforementioned UNTIP Protocol. A child is designated as any person under the age of 18, and child trafficking is defined as the, quote, recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring, and or receipt, end quote, of a child for the purpose of slavery, forced labor, or exploitation, quote, even if this does not involve any of the means set forth in subparagraph A of this article. Specifically included in this is the trafficking in minors for adoption, a practice called child harvesting. The systematic sale of human children, typically for adoption by families in the developed world, but also for other purposes, including human trafficking. Child harvesting programs, or the locations at which they take place, are sometimes referred to as baby factories or baby farms. Commercial sexual exploitation of children can take many forms, including forcing a child into prostitution or other forms of sexual activity or child pornography. Child exploitation may also involve forced labor or services, slavery or practices similar to slavery, servitude, the removal of organs, illicit international adoption, trafficking for early marriage, recruitment as child soldiers for use in begging, or as athletes such as child camel jockeys or football players. As early as 1886, in his foundational work, Psychopathia Sexualis, Richard Freiherr von Kraft Ebing, 1840-1902, identified what he called age fetishism, a premise that has, since 1986, come to be called chronophilia and was identified by New Zealand psychologist John William Money, 1921 until 2006, as a form of paraphilia in which an individual experiences sexual attraction limited to individuals of particular age ranges. In turn, paraphilia is the experience of intense sexual arousal to atypical objects, situations, fantasies, behaviors, or individuals. According to the American Psychology Association, publishing in 2008, pedophilia is a psychiatric disorder in which an adult or older adolescent experiences a primary or exclusive sexual attraction to prepubescent children. Although girls typically begin the process of puberty at age 10 or 11, and boys at age 11 or 12, 
criteria for pedophilia extend the cutoff point for prepubescence to age 13. A person must be at least 16 years old and at least 5 years older than the prepubescent child for the attraction to be diagnosed as pedophilia. Infantophilia is a subtype of pedophilia. It is used to refer to a sexual preference for children under the age of five, especially infants and toddlers. Hebophilia is defined as individuals with a primary or exclusive sexual interest in 11 to 14 year old pubescence. Ephophilia is the primary sexual interest in mid to late adolescence generally ages 15 to 19. In the APA's publication, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 5th edition, called DSM-5, pedophilic disorder is defined as a paraphilia involving intense and recurrent sexual urges toward and fantasies about prepubescent children that have either been acted upon or which cause the person with the attraction distress or interpersonal difficulty. The APA considers pedophilic disorder a paraphilia, not a sexual orientation. In the United States, following Kansas v. Hendricks in 1997, Sex offenders who are diagnosed with certain mental disorders, particularly pedophilia, can be subject to indefinite involuntary commitment. Consumption of child pornography is a more reliable indicator of pedophilia than molesting a child, although some non-pedophiles also view child pornography. Child pornography may be used for a variety of purposes ranging from private sexual gratification or trading with other collectors to preparing children for sexual abuse as part of the child grooming process. Pedophilic viewers of child pornography are often obsessive about collecting, organizing, categorizing, and labeling their child pornography collection according to age, gender, sex act, and fantasy. According to FBI agent Kenneth V. Lanning, writing in 2010's Child Molesters, a Behavioral Analysis, 5th edition, published by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, collecting pornography does not mean that they merely view pornography, but that they save it and it comes to define, fuel, and validate their most cherished sexual fantasies. Lanning goes on to state that the collection is the single best indicator of what the offender wants to do, but not necessarily of what has or will be done. In 2002, researchers M. Taylor and E. Quayle reported that pedophilic collectors of child pornography are often involved in anonymous internet communities dedicated to extending their collections. As child sexual abuse is not automatically an indicator that its perpetrator is a pedophile, offenders can be separated into two types, preferential and situational. However, estimates for the rate of pedophilia in detected child molesters generally range between 25% and 50 percent, and a 2006 study found that precisely 35 percent of its sample of child molesters were pedophilic. Child molesters, pedophilic or not, employ a variety of methods to gain sexual access to children. Some groom their victims into compliance with attention and gifts, while others use threats, alcohol or drugs, or physical force. In 1988, a nationwide study of sexual abuse in U.S. daycare agencies, led by David Finkelhor, 
divided ritual abuse allegations into three categories. Cult-based ritualism, in which the abuse had a spiritual or social goal for the perpetrators. Pseudo-ritualism, in which the goal was sexual gratification and the rituals were used to frighten or intimidate victims. And psychopathological ritualism, in which the rituals were due to mental disorders. Allegation of cult-based abuse is the most extreme scenario of the Satanic Ritual Abuse, SRA, premise. During the initial period of interest, starting in the early 1980s, the term SRA was used to describe a network of Satan-worshipping, secretive, intergenerational cults that were supposedly part of a highly organized conspiracy engaged in criminal behaviors such as forced prostitution, drug distribution, and pornography. These cults were also thought to sexually abuse and torture children in order to coerce them into a lifetime of devil worship. The proof presented by those who alleged the reality of cult-based abuse primarily consisted of the memories of adults recalling childhood abuse, the testimony of young children, and extremely controversial confessions. With both children and adults, no corroborating evidence has been found for anything except pseudo-Satanism, in which the satanic and ritual aspects were secondary to, and used as a cover for, sexual abuse. In 1994, the National Center on Child Abuse and Neglect conducted a study led by University of California psychologist Gail Goodman which found that among 12,000 accusations of satanic ritual abuse, there was no evidence for, quote, a well-organized intergenerational satanic cult who sexually molested and tortured children, end quote. Although there was, quote, convincing evidence of lone perpetrators or couples who say they are involved with Satan or use the claim to intimidate victims. One such case Goodman studied involved grandparents who had black robes, candles, and Christ on an inverted crucifix, and the children had chlamydia, a sexually transmitted disease, in their throats. According to a district attorney, as reported on in 1994 by the New York Times in an article by Daniel Goldman titled Proof Lacking for Ritual Abuse by Satanists. SRA has been linked to Dissociative Identity Disorder, DID, also known as Multiple Personality Disorder, or MP. D. A survey investigating 12,000 cases of alleged SRA found that most were diagnosed with DID as well as post-traumatic stress disorder. The level of dissociation in a sample of women alleging SRA was found to be higher than a comparable sample of non-SRA peers approaching the levels shown by patients diagnosed with DID. A sample of patients diagnosed with DID and reporting childhood SRA also presented other symptoms according to a 1991 study, including, quote, dissociative states with satanic overtones, severe post-traumatic stress disorder, survivor guilt, bizarre self-abuse, unusual fears, sexualization of sadistic impulses, indoctrinated beliefs, and substance abuse. Many women claiming to be SRA survivors 
have been diagnosed as sufferers of DID, and it is unclear if their claims of childhood abuse are accurate or a manifestation of their diagnosis. Of a sample of 29 patients who presented with SRA, 22 were diagnosed with disassociative identity disorders, including DID. Authors have also noted that 58% of the SRA claims appeared in the years following the Geraldo Rivera special on SRA and a further 34% following a workshop on SRA presented in the area. Skeptics claimed that the increase in DID diagnosis in the 1980s and 90s and its association with memories of SRA is evidence of malpractice by treating professionals. One explanation for the SRA allegations is that they are based on false memories caused by the overuse of hypnosis and other suggestive techniques by therapists underestimating the suggestibility of their clients. Advocates of quote, false memory syndrome, FMS, claim that the purported memories of ritual abuse are confabulations created through suggestion or coercion. 